Hi, I'm Ksenia and welcome to Guiding Star Astrology. I'm your Astro Weather Girl here with this week's Astro Weather Report. I'm going to show you how the stars are going to affect your life this week. Hello, I'm Ksenia and I want to empower you through the tool of astrology. This week we're looking at the energies that are playing out from the 18th of June through the 25th of June. Thanks for joining me. So keep in mind as I do this reading that this is a read for your personal passing energies. Not the big collective experience that we are all living through right now. I will be doing some videos in the future about what we're all experiencing right now. I've got some interviews coming up that are going to be very, very fascinating on this topic. But what we're experiencing right now is a result of Pluto in the final degrees, where is he, of Capricorn, um, Saturn and Uranus getting ready for their final square this is very very important this is currently building I'll be talking about this one in future videos uh, of course the ongoing Eris Pluto square and the outflow of the full moon in Sagittarius this week which was pretty full-on for those of us who are sensitive to energies um, and I said in my patreon video get ready this moon is out of bounds it's conjunct the galactic center and it's a super full moon close to the earth and I described some of the things that we could expect to feel and expect to see in the world as a result of that moon and as always astrology is never wrong so predictions came true there um, that video if you're interested in finding out more about that full moon is up on the patreon page if you want to join the patreon family and get all the new moon full moon action then um, just join there and we have plenty of other astrology learn astrology videos available for patrons as well so as i said what i'm going to be speaking about today will be more about what will affect you in the week ahead how you will feel what you might encounter so as many just before we get into that as many people are aware we are in a massive spiritual battle at the moment and we have been for the last three years in fact we've been for the last couple of thousand years but um but particularly it's been visible in the last three years just the nature of the spiritual battle that is going on and a lot of people email me and they ask me what can i do how can i you know uh, how can i help resolve the situation how can i fight this spiritual battle in the best way possible which is they're great questions to ask this when everything around us is spiraling out of control i i, I know i for one am always like well how can i fix this situation how can i change this situation how can i make it better i'm a problem solver and there's a lot of my my clients and friends out there who are the same they're wanting to know what can we do well I've came across a fantastic meme this week that really lifted my spirits and gave me a good focus. Um, the spiritual enemy, if you like, um, is trying to cause we, the, the people, the common people out there in the world, um, to succumb to either fear or outrage. And, you know, if, if we know as people that, it, if, that we have the power to manifest our own reality and that our thoughts create the reality that we experience those of us who are into esoteric law know this it's a case of as within so without if you're in a state of fear you tend to produce fearful circumstances or see fearful circumstances everywhere if you're in an inner state of outrage you're going to do the same thing so the media and the government they've been trying to keep us in two states of reality either they, they, both are designed to further their agenda you know it's the i would say actually the agenda of enlil for those of you who are familiar with um ancient sumerian mythology and uh, the story of enlil so i think th this is what they're trying to keep us in uh, a state of servitude and fear through either being uh, afraid um, or being outraged so what happens if you're in a state of fear we keep manifesting in the world something to be fearful of and this happens on the collective level as much as the individual level if the whole population of the earth is in a state of fear oh my god COVID, blah 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 um, then what happens we get more things to be afraid of if we're in a perpetual state of outrage because how dare they do this how dare they take away our rights and da 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 that keeps man manifesting circumstances where they continue to outrage us so what can we do well 
and I'm sorry to go off on this, but I, but I do get questions on this quite regularly, and so I wanted to address it, even though it's not particularly focused on astrology. So for those who are annoyed by this, um, how about suck it up? <laughs> because I know a lot of people are like, I just come here for the astrology. Um, but I just wanted to address this for all the people who ask me questions. I can't reply to all the emails that I get. I just get so many on this topic, so I'm trying to address it here and now. What can we do? How can we win this battle? Well, we fight by seeking the highest vibration possible so that we manifest more of the good things that we desire in the world, you know, more love, more joy, more gratitude, more hope, more beauty, more kindness, more creativity, more wonder. I personally, I follow a couple of fabulous um, social media pages that are talking about you know, building beautiful communities. And I've got some land to share for people who want to come and live and work on my on my land with me for free rent, you know. Um, things like that that just lift my spirits enormously to see the kind of collaborations that are occurring and the amount of love and non-judgment and non, you know, crucifixion of people who think differently, just embracing of we're all humans, let's make a beautiful life together. And that's where we should be directing our thoughts and our energy and our focus. Now, the battle isn't over, obviously, and indeed the next six months astrologically is speaking to some great battles that are coming up. And I will be talking about that in the future. Actually, if you're interested in knowing a little bit more about that, now there is a fabulous video that I did at the start of the year titled The Energy is for 2022. It's in my astrology discussions playlist. Um, you may want to check that out if you want to get in early on some of these things but there are some great battles astrologically that are coming up and we will be you know at what happens above is experienced within we will be going through this so it's good to be forewarned and forearmed and if there was ever a time to manifest more blessings on the planet it's now you know there are good people out there as i've just described doing wonderful things building incredible communities already find your tribe don't perpetuate fear and outrage. Don't be ignorant, but resist what they are trying to do by entering into what many um, these days call the fifth dimension. Uh, you know, don't you don't need to pretend that everything's happy, happy, joy, joy. Um, but you know, seeking to build more love in your life, more happiness, to do loving things with your family and your friends, to you know, share kindness um, in small little ways that just make every day brighter and more beautiful. This is what we can be doing, and the more we do it, the more that builds. Like um, you know, the, the the snowball rolling down the mountainside, it grows larger and larger and more effective. And and in the end, you can't stop the snowball coming down the mountainside. It's just that powerful. So that's how we build this and that's how we fight this. So I wanted to just address that. Thank you for letting me um, share my little piece there. Ooh, okay, how about this week's energy focus? You know, Venus and once again is going to be the big gun this week. Now, last week we had the full moon, but Venus was responsible for a lot of what we were feeling in the lead up to that full moon and even afterwards. So Venus is actually doing quite a lot this week as well. Let's explore the things, not only that Venus is up to, that, that all the planets are up to, but um, we're going to put a big focus on Venus when we do the All Signs Breakdown. So Moon is going to be conjunct. Oh, sorry, I've got my fringe in my eyes. Moon is going to conjunct with Saturn um, on June the 18th. Here they are in Aquarius. They're going to be sitting pretty together now we all have those days when we just want to keep to ourselves to ponder to think to go inwards without disturbance you know and moon conjunct saturn is usually behind those fairly regular episodes because the moon conjuncts saturn once a month so at its worst you might feel completely disconnected from everybody else on the 18th like you just don't fit in or you're emotionally you know not in alignment with anyone else out there i hear you um but what you can do to utilize this energy is to embrace a more detached realistic and grounded approach to your life be more organized be more disciplined and take a mature perspective on things um, you you might be a little on the cynical side and hey that's okay you know it can you know being so grounded in reality can make you a little cynical sometimes with this energy playing out it really doesn't hurt now and then um, it can help you structure your life to make better choices when we go through those sort of you know more grounded let's say experiences um, we tend to peek at the world when the moon's conjunct Saturn through a bit of a gray lens um, however don't fall 
fall into despondency about that, about what you uncover in yourself or about what you see going on in the world around you with this energy. It will pass and you will bounce back again, okay? Then on the 19th, we have Venus making a square to Saturn here. Now, this happens twice a year. It's not unusual. But nobody is going to say, hey, that's my favorite transit, because it's not. It's a hard one. And again, following on from moon conjunct Saturn the day before. So we're going to have a couple of days of heaviness. Be prepared for this. So in the negative, this twice annual transit can bring like feelings of disappointment, particularly in love or frustration with our responsibilities and duties. We have difficulty relaxing. We have difficulty having fun. Uh, we tend to see the money go down the drain. You know, you know, we're feeling repressed by our intimate connections. You know, they're holding us back. People who are, you know, usually I love and care about, they're holding me back from having the joy that I want in my life. You know, we feel these sorts of emotions, okay? And naturally, without consciousness, this can bring a lot of melancholy and brooding. So be forewarned and forearmed on that one. The secret with this though is to detach a little you know realize this is just a passing energy as it does twice a year every year it's time to rest time it's time to be kind to yourself time to observe your relationships with more objectivity and again this is going to pass I will just say be careful how you spend your money you'll probably be a bit tight with the money um, you won't be splashing it around you know, I, think, I remember in a film that I love, there was a line, oh, you're splashing the money around like a man with no arms. And um, that's what this is all about, you know. We are, we're tight, we're stingy, we're, um, we've got no freedom with our money. And we might be feeling that because we're feeling the, the crunch ourselves or, you know, things on our budget are pretty tight. So that's another thing just to be aware of with this particular transit. But it's going to pass. It's not going to last. Yay. Then the next day on June the 20th, we have Venus hitting 26 degrees of Taurus. Okay, so this is where Algol, you know, the big reputation about 26 degrees of Taurus is Algol, you know, that the evil star and what have you. Um, quite frankly, I have not observed Algol to be menacing uh, myself because, and I've gone into this in other videos as well, but Algol sits too far off the ecliptic plane. So, you know, it, the planets don't actually conjunct with it. Yes, they're in Algol's vicinity. They're hanging around that area of the, the sky, but they're not in an actual physical, as you can see it in the sky, conjunction with Algol because Algol's out here and Venus is out here. Like they are, they're miles apart from one another. They are not actually conjunct on the ecliptic plane. So just chill with that, that idea a little bit. Um, but Venus, as I said, is at, um, at 26 degrees of Taurus where Algol sits, but this is also where we had the November 19 eclipse back in 2021, just gone. So the Saros cycle of this particular eclipse was all about delight and all about love. So in short, it was a very, and I'll quote my one of my mentors, um, Bernadette Brady here, it was a very happy, joyful family of eclipses. There was a sense of good news, of falling in love, and a peak experience that was joyful in some way. Now, I found that to be exactly the case in my life around that time. It wasn't that there weren't yucky things happening, but there was a good thing that came into my life at that time. Absolutely. So look back on, you know, um, November 19 or around about then. And, you know, was there a result for you that was joyful? Now, not everybody will have experienced joy from the November 19 eclipse and its subsequent results because not everybody has planets around this point in their chart that would have got triggered by the eclipse. And that's what you need to have been able to notice um, the effects of this eclipse in your life. But Venus moving across this point will reactivate all those gorgeous themes that the Sarah cycle wanted to manifest. Because the Sarah cycle was about love, like I've just described. And here, Venus, goddess of love, is now at that point. So there is an activation of the Saros cycle themes with Venus moving across the 26th degree of Taurus mark. I'm looking forward to that. Once again, consider what was unfolding in your life in mid-November and sort of early December that was precious, that was beautiful, and that was magical for you. Did anything of that nature culminate in the following weeks? after the eclipse. Well, get ready, my friends. We may be just about to enjoy a delightful repeat of that enchanting energy. And I think we could all use a bit of that right now. 
Then on the 21st, so there's a lot happening this week. On the 21st, the sun over here, currently in Gemini, is going to move into Cancer. And what is that? That is solstice. Summer solstice in the Northern Hemisphere, winter solstice here in the Southern Hemisphere. And I, for one, am very glad to see winter solstice arrive because it means from now on in the Southern Hemisphere, the days are going to start getting longer. So bit by bit, we're going to have our shortest, um, shortest day here in the Southern Hemisphere on the 21st of June. In the Northern Hemisphere, it's going to uh, be their longest day. And for you guys in the Northern Hemisphere, the days are going to get progressively shorter from now as you move towards autumn. So the sun has gone as far, what this means in, in the sky is that the sun has gone as far as it's going to go north of the equator for the year. Basically, it's hit the Tropic of Cancer. Here we are, sun in Cancer, zero degrees of Cancer is the when the sun hits the Tropic of, of Cancer. You know what? For three days, the sun holds tight at the 23rd uh, degree uh, and 26 minutes in declination um, before beginning its six-month return journey back to over here, zero degrees of Capricorn, the Tropic of Capricorn. So it's six months, you know, here and then another six months there between each of the winter summer solstices depending on where you are in the world so the sun has gone as far as it's going to go and it sits for three days at 23 degrees thereabouts um, uh, of declination you know and that's what the tropic of cancer is it's sort of 23 degrees above the equator and the tropic of capricorn is roughly 23 degrees below the equator um, in declination so it's a significant three day period for the earth when this occurs so the day before the day of 21st of june and the day after the this is something to be celebrated and this is like in ancient times they used to celebrate winter solstice they used to celebrate summer solstice um, because this was a precious time like three days is so pivotal in mythology and you see it all the time and it, it very much has to do with um, the moon every month has a three-day sort of period where it's invisible and this is the sun's three-day period. And in a sense, it's like all the mythologies where we go into the underworld and are reborn into something new. And that's what the sun's doing. It's kind of, it's not disappearing, but it's stopping. And it's got its sort of Jonah in the whale experience or Jesus in the tomb experience and, you know, stopped at a point and then it will move on, um, head back in the other direction. So in, in a sense, it's very much like... Um, you know, we are preparing for the new. We are being redirected, re reoriented, so to speak, in our lives as much as the sun is beginning its reorientation in the sky. And think about the, the mythologies of, of Jonah in the whale. He was in the whale, for th the belly of the whale, for three days, according to the mythology. There he was in the whale, three days. What happened during that time? He reoriented his purpose. Before he went into the whale, he, you know, he was like, I'm running away from my mission, my purpose, you know, I'm heading in this direction and I'm not going to go to Nineveh and tell the Assyrians that they're a pack of tosses. You know, I'm not going to do that. So and he ended up in the whale. And then while he was in the whale, he made his reconciliation or his peace with God or his inner self or whatever. And he was like, okay, I will go to Nineveh. I will speak to the Assyrians. And so once he was vomited up on the beach um, he was then off to Nineveh to go and tell them that they're all a pack of tosses so that's what this is like for us it's a it's a redirectioning it's a reorientation period for us so again when we think about the um, yeah the, the, this this energy Think about, okay, we'll look back in the summer solstice in, in Australia and the Southern Hemisphere or the winter solstice in the Northern Hemisphere. Back in um, December when we had the solstice, the last solstice, did your life reorient in any particular way? Did you redirection your life in any particular way? That's the kind of thing that we're looking at. Each time that we have a solstice, we are the sun stops and redirections itself doesn't really stop you know it's not stopping in the sky at all it's just from our vantage point on earth that I'm describing this but the, the symbology is the same this is a chance for us to redirection our lives to reorient our lives it's very very exciting now the guiding star Patreon family and I will be celebrating the solstice 
it's a wonderful, wonderful event that I that I love. So do see Linktree or the details in the bio if you want to come and join us with the Guiding Star Patreon family. Um, and what I yeah, I, I won't give any more details away than that. So we would love to have you there with us. So the sun in Cancer, just generally speaking, it's going to be there for the next 30 days after June 21st, it brings more sensitivity to our, to our lives. You know, our, our affection for our family might get a chance to glow and shine more. The sun shines a light and illuminates our empathy and our emotional side and our emotional intelligence. Also watch for the shadow expression of hypersensitivity, overprotection, fearfulness and smothering that can sometimes come out too. These, can, these things can be our ultimate undoing. So just be careful that cancer energy like all signs has a shadow and a light side then also on the 21st we're nearly through all the the this week's energy before we get to the breakdown guys then on the 21st which is also the day of solstice venus is going to be trining pluto awkward here excuse me there we are big trine messy trine drawn by me to pluto there in capricorn so you know consider Consider the old Hollywood film stars, you know, um, Marlena Dietrich, Sophia Loren, Marilyn Monroe, Bridget Bardo. What do they all have in common? What are they all known for? They're being sex symbols, you know, and that's what this energy is all about. That extreme sexiness, desirability. That's what to be sexy is, to be desirable, you know. Um, that is what this intensely attractive aspect is all about. And because Pluto is such a passionate energy, we're going to feel very deeply about our love relationships. We're going to feel very passionate about the things that we love in our lives. Our desire increases and affection becomes hungered after. We yearn for it. Um, Pluto, the ancient god of great wealth, um, it, he was struck by Aphrodite's, not Aphrodite's, Aphrodite commanded Cupid to fire an arrow at the god Pluto and, you know, to turn this cold god of the underworld, you know, into a, into a god who could love and, and, and feel passion and desire. So, yes, Pluto's the cold god of the underworld, but he's also extremely passionate. And anyhow, when that happened, uh, when Cupid fired his arrow, Pluto spotted um, Persephone and it was all on. Um, there's more to that story than just that. But, you know, I want to point out this passionate um, energy of Pluto. And I'm actually doing a series on Pluto's transits through the houses at the moment on my um, YouTube channel. And so do join in for that. If you want to know all about Pluto, all about his behavior, all about his energy, and all about what he's going to do for you when he transits through Aquarius over the next 20 years, then check out that video series that I'm doing throughout this winter. Um, so Pluto, the ancient god of great wealth, here he is dancing with Venus, the ruler of finances. So this might see us you know, getting into some deep research regarding our financial options, revising our budgets, making some secret investments perhaps as well that could really pay off in the positive for us due to the fact that this is a very auspicious energy. So if you've been looking and thinking about doing some certain investments and what have you, especially as Venus is in its own sign, Taurus, then now could be a good time to make those investments on the 21st um, and to get into, you know, Pluto, uh, Venus, try and financial ideas you know how to create generate great wealth pluto ancient god of great wealth for yourself in the future and after that we're going to have venus i'm going to leave her there but venus is going to move into gemini on the 23rd of june so lots of venus action this week now when venus is in gemini this can be a very playful time for lovers of all ages and all walks of life gemini wants to have fun and venus adores her luxuries and her pleasures so good times so we tend to handle love and relationships with more lightness of being when we have venus in gemini you know we're more chatty we're more open and curious about our partners under this energy um, also uh, there's a lot of knowledge that comes with air energy as well well and so knowledge gives a, a sense of delight too so during um, this transit is going to last for about a month um, we might receive some happy news we might learn some valuable information we might upgrade certain life skills that makes our joint journey through life more beautiful and more enjoyable so let the breezes of Gemini flow through your love life and your financial affairs under this influence you might find a, a greater sense of peace in doing so 
Now we're going to look at the all signs breakdown and we're going to focus in on this trine between Venus and Pluto this week. Now this is um, this is generally a positive energy as I've indicated in the, the breakdown I've just given. But there's always a shadow side to Pluto and he is one of the great gods out there. You know, in ancient mythology, we had the, the three masculine Olympian gods, which were Neptune, um, Zeus or Jupiter and Pluto. So he's pretty powerful, pretty potent dude. Um, and and there is a, there's a sh really strong shadow and light side to Pluto. So we need to keep that in mind, okay? We might have some strange but rather positive relationship occurrences, um, very unexpected, very rapid kind of relationship occurrences. There could be money changes, mostly to the positive, mostly to the positive for this, this beautiful trine. The women in our lives um, could become more intense and maybe have a heightened sense of sexuality which is great if you're a guy and you know you want your wife to get it on you know this is great um, <laughs> if you've got that opportunity why not why not go for it um, there could be some discoveries for a lot of people of new occult interests you know you might suddenly get a passion for um, for researching astrology looking into esoteric history or metaphysics or something like that so you know definitely could be uh, an inspiration there that comes that way and of course there could be some very um, sort of higher level insights and revelations and truths that are revealed because Pluto does like to he's the hidden god but he does like to expose the hidden realms every now and again um, so there might be some truths that come out regarding sort of women in your life or your money or material situation regarding relationships and regarding maybe your sensual side things that are things can be revealed regarding Venusian things under this transit so let's have a look at how that is affecting us all uh let's start with aquarius okay just random choice there um aquarius okay so this is this is actually going to be felt more in your fourth house where venus is moving um so this is the house of home property roots parents ancestors your retirement years are seen from the fourth house feelings domestic life how well you feel you belong in the world how your ability to bond and connect is seen from this realm of the chart too so this is the strongest house for Venus in Vedic astrology so you can really now enjoy this time of beauty and peace in your innermost world and Pluto what does Pluto do in his um, trine aspect he he ex not expands that's what Jupiter does he empowers whatever he touches so there's going to be an empowerment of your ability to appreciate the beauty and peace in your inner world um, you could fall in love under this transit if you've got other things going on in your chart in your natal chart you need more than just this but if you did it would be with somebody from your home environment or your community that you come from you know or you might even meet somebody in your home let's say you know you need to call in someone Pluto is plumbing call in someone to fix your plumbing and lo and behold poof it's like love of my life Mr. Plumber Man, you know, <laughs> or woman. Um, fantastic. So you'll that can happen. You know, you might meet somebody in your home. You'll want to connect with someone who feels familiar to you in some way. Now, whether that's in a love relationship, as I've just described, where, you know, all the, the fireworks go off, um, or whether it's actually... Um, a bit different to that you you just want to connect with someone you want to feel close you want to feel nurtured and cared for um that can also be the case too and you'll probably want to do so with somebody f that you're familiar with or someone from your past or your history so there's lots of love in your family and domestic environment under this influence right now and um, there can even be a strong sense of stability present um, you know Pluto is not known for his stabilizing influence but because of the the beneficial nature of this trine it can um, you know see lead you to sort of want to beautify your world and that helps you feel more at home more peaceful more settled in this very this house that likes security so you know you might have had the might get the urge to spring clean you know or to tidy up the bookshelves or something and sort out your walk-in robe or something that makes you just feel more settled and that, that your home environment is more beautiful um, some people might get a, a sudden and unexpected support from family members financially with this influence now um, family can even increase your own personal sense 
of value, you know, that might, you know, give you a compliment or encourage you in some way or uplift you in some way that makes you feel good about who you are. This is a great energy also for gardening, Venus in Taurus in general, but empowered by Pluto very much so. So you might be spending money on your garden under this influence, um, you might be spending money on your decor, your home life, your food, your car, your boat, your bike. Now, and there can even for some people, depending on what else is happening in their chart, but it can be an influence that brings sudden windfalls that come from property or land development uh, under this influence. Um, it's also connected to your heart chakra. So where's your heart these days, Aquarius people? What is, what do you love? You know, what are you? Where's your your feelings and emotions going to? Well, this is, this is the fourth house of the house of anything heart centered, and this could be whatever you love, whatever your your heart energy is directed to, could be very very empowered now under this particular energy on the twenty first of June. Sorry, not the twenty first of June. This is occurring. Let me check on. Yes, sorry, the twenty first of June. Of, quite an important day because it's solstice and we've got the Pluto um, uh, Venus energy happening I had to double think there okay Pisces Pisces rising Pisces Sun Pisces moon people well the energy of this Venus Pluto trine that's occurring is happening for you guys with a focus on the third house so this the, the the third house is quick it's fast it's like changeable so there's going to be an empowerment on the 21st um, from Pluto to Venus that's going to help you think quick um, and make some very fast changes in your life if you need to change something particularly with Venus things you know maybe it's something to do with decor or your fashion sense or makeup or whatever Venus based things that can be a quick change that you, you're making um, our thinking affects how we feel about things and so third house is very important in that regard and it affects our mental state and you know as within so without what we feel is what we can attract what we think about is what we manifest more of as I said in the introduction to this video so you are likely to be thinking about more Venusian things now now that might be that you're thinking about how to beautify something how to make yourself more beautiful how to you know have a beautiful trip away localized travel is seen from this particular combo um, you might be thinking more about love you might be thinking more about your finances uh, you probably might also be thinking about people who are third house people the people that we have not chosen to have in our lives you know but they're in our lives you know our siblings uh, our neighbors these are the kinds of people that are seen through the, from the third house the people we don't choose but they're in our lives for better or worse so we might be thinking a lot about them and how to uh, enjoy their interaction your interact pardon me your interaction with them more um, how to you know you might even be uh, doing something beautiful with a neighbor like you're out there trimming back a hedge or something and a neighbor pops over the fence with a bunch of camellias that he's just picked off his tree or something so these sorts of beautiful experiences is what we're looking at here with neighbors with siblings and even friends as well particularly female friends with Venus um, the third house is about how socially adaptable we actually are as well and so because of this energy of support in the third house we are going to be feeling more socially adaptable and flexible um, and that's that's always an advantage you know adaptability is yeah one of the keys to being able to navigate the ups and downs of life so we will be feeling more flexible and more adaptable even though it's occurring in the sign of Taurus which is a little bit more of that uh, fixed stuck energy from time to time Venus trine Pluto is going to help us be more flexible now the third house is connected to the throat chakra and our ability to speak um, it's our thoughts and our expression as well so Pluto is going to empower us to have beautiful thoughts and beautiful words now beautiful conversations with our friends beautiful discussions beautiful even beautiful ideas you know if you've been looking for inspiration this could be a day when it will come flooding in for you um, yeah this is a, a an energy of, of movement as well and it, and your your movements can be more graceful and beautiful with Venus here as a Pisces rising I'm looking forward to that I've been the winter's very cold here in Australia this year I've been feeling very stiff and sore so I might do a bit of dancing on this day and see if I can get my body moving more gracefully now 
For some, this is a, having Venus here can be a Danya yoga for self-made wealth. And so, you know, as I said, we're going to be um, talking and thinking in a way that's very Venusian, sweet and gentle and receptive. Um, it's a positive placement for good listening. But because of this Danya yoga for wealth in a house of, of small business, if you are running a small business, if you have a, a business of your own or a side hustle or something, then this is going to be very supportive for you generating money. Um, so it could be, a, you know, I'm not saying that you, you're suddenly going to have a million bucks in your bank, but it is an energy where suddenly you might get more orders than you usually do or there's a lot more interest in your small business or you know just things tick along better because of this energy on the 21st now as i was talking a moment ago about um uh, the words that we use you know uh, it's a placement for the use of beautiful words and so salespeople, if you're running a business small business that has sales um, sales people do very well with this placement because they can be convincing you know they're seducing with their words and you know you can sell a lot more product um, be aware of lovers who might seduce you with their words under this influence and promise you the world but not follow through um, fortunately like it's a it's a sorry I keep getting something in my eye it's a positive aspect between Pluto and Venus so they may follow through but yeah just be careful of seducing words um, you'll love to talk as well when when you've got this placement so having good chats having good conversations is likely to be on the cards you know sharing humorous moments with friends and intellectual conversation will be empowered as well um, talking about aesthetics and design and harmony and balance and peace and diplomacy in the world you might even come up with some very empowering ideas for how to make the world more peaceful and as I said in the beginning to, of this video I shared with you my thoughts on that maybe I'm tapping into Venus <laughs> trying Pluto right now um, before it's even occurred which can often be the case when you're a Pisces person who's very tuned in and sensitive to what's happening out there with the energies um, you can attract more wealth in life through wherever Venus is usually in the natal chart but even by transit a little bit too so through third house things at the moment that you can cr generate more prosperity for yourself take a small trip write a blog learn an instrument do some sort of craftsmanship you know and and focus in on your small business it can actually be more of a lucrative time Venus is love as you know and and um, I think we can be communicating our love through words during this particular period you know you can you know write a note leave it under the windscreen wiper for your lover um, do those sorts of nice little things with words um, for the people that you love under this energy um, those of us who are single under this energy you know it's possible that you might meet a lover through doing a third house thing you know going for a walk taking a little holiday somewhere um, and by that I mean like somewhere down the road maybe two or three hours um, studying some new course um, meeting up with a small group hanging out with your siblings or neighbors these sorts of things could actually put you in the path of a partner so the th third house represents um, short-term things and with this placement it can give more short-term relationships if something was to develop under this energy and just to wrap up Pisces it wouldn't be surprising to see yourself spending more money on third house things under this empowerment from Pluto so that might be magazines books subscriptions advertising courses webinars or maybe taking like a weekend breakaway somewhere all right thank you that was a long one for Pisces wasn't it Aries people Aries rising Sun or moon people we're looking for at the 21st of June which is solstice day but we're actually looking at the energy from Pluto to Venus in a trine now the natural ruler of the second house is Venus in her own sign Taurus and so this is strong this is a strong placement for Venus and she's going to be empowered through the trine from the great god Pluto so it kind of guarantees for Aries people on the 21st that you will experience the luxuries and the enjoyments of life you know if you love rich and decadent food Aries well especially if it's finally presented or something you know you will be enjoying that you know going to a high tea celebration or out for dinner to a fancy restaurant um, you might even if even if you're not a sweet tooth by natural nature the amplification by Pluto can cause you to sort of need to buy that block of chocolate when you're down at the supermarket um, even a taste for alcohol that's more sweet based like cocktails or ciders or things like that can also um, crop up for you under this energy 
Um, things that satiate the senses are what is going to be amplified for Aries people, you know, those fine silk sheets or those um, that lovely velvet cushion or, you know, um, I'm trying to think of other sort of decadent things, beautiful music and a, a lovely soak in the bath and things like that that are very sensually based uh, uh, where you should be directing your attention under this energy because you're going to feel it stronger than usual you're going to enjoy that bath more than you usually would you're going to appreciate those silk sheets more than you ordinarily would so the enjoyment of second house pleasures and delights you know clothes makeup jewelry art music furniture stuff like that um, you might even sort of be more inclined to collect things and spend money on those things um, under this amplification energy from Pluto. Uh, you'll love and enjoy how you're using your money on this day. It will feel good to you. So just be careful if you're going for a shopping trip that you don't go overboard. But generally speaking, you'll enjoy using money. You'll enjoy making money under this influence. And you can attract more beautiful things into your life with these two gods of prosperity interacting so benevolently for you this week. So you can attract more beautiful things. You can attract more wealth. Um, there's a good ability here as well to about to be able to evaluate what's worthwhile, you know, what's valuable. Um, trust your taste during this particular transit um, because Pluto's enhancing your ability to weigh things up. I mean, Venus is the ruler of Libra, which is the scales, you know, weighing things up. What's value? What do I keep? What do I let go of? What is worthwhile? What is not worthwhile? So trust yourself on this day with your choices and your decision making in that regard. There can be some changes that come under this energy because Pluto is to transform some changes to your value system, to some changes to what you appreciate because of this transit. So you also need to, on this particular day, the 21st, focus on taking care of yourself and increasing your self-worth. And if you do so, you will be able to attract more money to you. So do honor the self, do like not indulge the self overly, but you know, allow yourself that 10 minute extra sleep in have a soak in the bath in the evening like do kind caring sensual things for yourself and um, you, you might see that the money grows as a result of that that's just how Venus works it's quite a fascinating energy so direct this sense of self-love and how beautiful you are um, you know, care for your external appearance, you know, on the 21st, make sure you don't just slop around in your old moccasins or whatever, put on your makeup, get dressed nicely, put some effort in to how attractive you are and it will boost how you feel about yourself and when you feel good, you draw more material blessings into your life. All right, Taurus, Taurus rising sun and moon, it's all happening for you in the first house. So there's this tremendous energy of magnetism that comes with this. Pluto is going to empower the Lord of your chart, your first house Lord transiting through your first house. Pluto is going to empower you because of that. And so your magnetism, your aura, your ability to charm others, to be beautiful, to be more likable, it's on fire under this energy with a beautiful trine from Pluto. You're going to feel more loving. You're going to feel more affectionate, pleasant, harmonious, diplomatic. People are going to love to be around you on the 21st of June because there's just this attractiveness that's amplified greatly by Pluto. And of course, you might be drawn to focusing and thinking a lot more about Venusian things in your life. You know, this might include, you know, um, you know, thinking about money, thinking about um, your own worth and value. Um, as I said in the intro to this piece, there can be some sudden and unexpected relationship experiences, love experiences that happen now because of Pluto's amplification of Venusian energy. Um, they'll be unexpected, um, there could, especially as Venus is still very close to Uranus. Um, there could be some money changes, Pluto is transformation. Um, and of course, there could be sudden windfalls. There could also be sudden losses, but with the trine, it's more likely to be the more blessed um, variant, <laughs> let's say. Um, and as a woman, if you're a woman listening to this, um, you might f find that your behavior becomes a bit more um, changeable with Uranus so close and Pluto playing into this as well. For better or for worse, you know, you might change and feel happier. Um, you might change and feel a little bit low. It could be a day when you actually go through a lot of emotions in the one day, so be prepared for that. You also, um, yeah, you also could discover some sort of new 
occult interest that really floats your boat things like astrology things like maybe homeopathy maybe becoming an apothecary something like that to do with nature for Taurus rising people um, would be great I'd love to see more apothecaries in the world actually you know natural herbal plant-based medicines fantastic um, so uh, gaining higher level insights and revelations and truths can also be very real for you under this energy. Um, things that reveal more about who you are and expose more about who you are, you know, your relationship with money, your relationship with materiality, um, your sensual side, coming to understand your sensual side more um, and, and seeing who you are and valuing who you are more. Um, so if you are a man with Taurus rising and you're listening to this, um, you might be you might find that the women that you're attracted to are a little bit on a bit of a roller coaster on this particular day. Um, and men with this particular configuration might be receiving some sort of revelation about a woman that they care about or a woman in their life, um, something that they didn't know is revealed under this Pluto um, energy. Um, so I would also say as well with Pluto making a trine to the Lord of your Ascendant in your Ascendant house that it would not be unexpected for you to suddenly get an impulse to go get your hair cut or buy a whole new outfit or something that changes your appearance quite significantly. So don't be surprised to see something impulsively coming that way. And why not? It's fun. All right, Gemini. Gemini, rising sun or moon. I think I just said Gemini. Or it sounded like Gemini that came out of my mouth. <laughs> Gemini, rising, sun or moon. Well, we've got the energy of a trine from Pluto to Venus occurring, uh, being felt in the 12th house. And Venus is what we love and what we will enjoy. So it could be international travel that you are loving and enjoying under this um, influence or the exploration of faraway places. Um, you might be enjoying spiritual, mystical, tangible items, you know, um, maybe you're, you're out shopping, which is a very Venusian thing to do and you come across a, an incredible tiki totem or something like that. And you just love it. And, and of course, for those who don't know, they're not just a, you know, retro culture icon they're actually a spiritual thing so you know these tangible items mystical items um, beautiful enjoying beautiful hotels and resorts they're very 12th house as well so you might get the chance to do that or a refined day spa or going to an art exhibition or a film um, a film show or something like that or some sort of music all of these highly creative things are 12th house having uh, you know doing something luxurious for your bedroom buying some I don't know decadent cushions to sit on your bed if you need more cushions on your bed um, or you know silk sheets or something like that making your bedroom more luxurious and attractive Venus in the 12th house trined and amplified by Pluto on the 21st so if you are somebody um, Gemini who is in love at the moment well, you might like to think about getting your partner something that is very 12th house, doing something kind for your partner that's very 12th house, you know, maybe take them to a faraway place if you are so fortunate to be able to do that sort of thing. Um, indulge them with some sort of sacred, mystical, spiritual objects as gifts, or maybe gift them a 12th house thing like a yoga class or a meditation class or a night at a luxury hotel or retreat. In fact, if you can book in for a little one night getaway, this is the day to do do it Gemini if you want a bit of fun <laughs> um, or you know you could indulge your partner in some sort of spa treatment or some sort of beautification for the bedroom you know like I said bed lamps luxury bed linen and that sort of thing um, spending might be a bit of an issue for you though I do have to point out there can be this is the house of loss there can be a loss of money um, put into things that you do to make you feel good in order to escape reality now we all need a bit of that every now and again but Pluto can blow things out of proportion and so you know always a danger of going too far with it um, so just be cautious and conscious of you know how much you're spending and what your budget is like you might even make some money um, because Pluto is going to amplify the Venusian issues and Venus is in her own sign very strong here so um, money could be made through 12th house things um, so if you're investing in spirituality and creativity in a film that's being made or in a fantasy book that's being written or something, healing, medicine, you know, illusion, escapism, investing in foreign travel or day spas or hospitals, even investing in a prison would be a 12th house thing 
that you could use your money for and it might actually go well for you on this day and if you've already got investments in those sorts of realms then you might see something of a reward on this day and I say that with a bit of um, caution because I know the stock market due to other factors that are going on astrologically is it's pretty wild times um, with the stock market so do be careful but you know in times that were perhaps a bit more stable you could make money with this transit um, but it's a it's a good energy for for being charitable I think you can be attain a lot of you know spiritual blessing and resolving of karma through being charitable and kind um, maybe with money or with other tangible items like food or clothing right now so it's a good energy to be sort of going through your cupboard and giving away um, what you don't need anymore that sort of thing um, watch out for any addiction to sugar or alcohol or escapism through those things under this energy uh, and again if you're going to go shopping be very careful about spending too much just to sort of feel good just to escape the ordinary blahness of reality I'm going to buy this I'm going to buy this I'm going to buy this and then you get home and go I didn't need any of this and now my bank account's empty you know you don't want to be in that position um, yeah there's also Venus when she transits through the 12th house can give us a craving for love you know, uh, and we hunger for it more, and Pluto is going to amplify that as well. So, if you're a single person having this transit, you know, you might be sort of feeling like, I just want it, and where is it, and why isn't it coming? And, you know, maybe you might need to get an astrology reading and find out when love is going to come for you. But just be aware that that energy is amplified on the 21st, and it will pass. It's not a permanent state of being. So, yeah. Um, yeah there's a there's a spiritualization of love uh, under this energy as well we can see our partner through sort of rose-colored glasses um yeah it can also sometimes be an indication that we might be being a bit self-sacrificing with regard to our love relationships so do some self-analysis under this transit just to make sure <laughs> that you're not diving into the martyr pool um Okay, so that's really about it in a nutshell when it comes to Venus in the 12th house by transit for Gemini people being amplified by Pluto. Lots going on. Okay, Cancer, rising, sun or moon people. Well, it's a special time for you because happy birthday. It's your month if you're a Cancer sun person. Um, but if you're rising and moon sign, it's probably not your birthday. Um, but what we are seeing here is Venus in your 11th house being trined by Pluto. And that's what we're focusing on the 11th house uh, manifestation of Pluto trying to Venus so there's an energy now uh, 11th house is a very social house it's an air house of wanting to be out in and social in the world you know but not just sort of going and meeting a girlfriend at a cafe this is I'm talking about large events like concerts fashion shows going to an art gallery places where people gather publicly so there's a, a real focus here and enjoyment of those things now uh, also this is a house of our friendships and with Venus here the emphasis is on our female friendships just be aware that they, they that Pluto's energy can make those female friendships more deep more connected more um, you know just I just love my girlfriends you know I want to be with them all the time you know it's not nothing kinky about it just a deep passionate love for our friends that that comes here um, but there could be some transformations as well with friendships because Pluto is the great transformer and um, he's about death and rebirthing in a positive sense so there could be some restoration of a friendship that's been on the rocks for cancer people there could be um, some you know uh, maybe somebody needs to go out of your life because they're just too toxic and Pluto here can see that the death of a friendship that needs to go that you're longing to see go um, that can also happen as well sort of sudden alterations that might happen on this day regarding friendship situations and there can be um, even some changes in the fortunes of your female friends as well you know they might suddenly have more money um, to shout you out to dinner or something wonderful so you know beautiful kindly generous experiences with friends uh, are also on the cards for you cancer people which is lovely because not everything's about us in the chart you know yes this is the house of friendship so this influence is actually more likely to be playing out with your friends than it will be likely to be felt by you um, when it comes to that dynamic but there are other things that you will feel 
um, that are 11th house based. So there's the potential to be gainful through anything that is Venus based, anything beautiful, anything romantic, anything um, that's, you know, pleasant like food or flowers or makeup or art or music, you know, things that are ruled by Venus um, can be gainful for you. Maybe, you know, you it could be as simple as this. It could be that you know, you go down the street because you've got to replace your liquid eyeliner because you're just about run out and they're having a two for one sale. Bonus, like that's a, that's a blessing, that's a gift, that's, that's a Pluto trine Venus in the 11th house thing. You gain an extra tube of liquid eyeliner because you went and bought it on this day. Now, we don't, I, I, I know when I first got into astrology, I was looking for the big things, the big events, the big windfalls and gains and life turns arounds and stuff like that. But often it's the little things like getting an extra bonus liquid eyeliner when you buy your other one. That's actually an indicative of a transit like this one. So yeah, don't, don't always be discouraged that the planets don't work or things aren't happening because sometimes it's very subtle. Now, they could also, it could be big as well. I'm, I'm not writing that off, but keep uh, your eyes open for the many ways it could manifest. Now, there could be some sudden and unexpected uh, changes, transformations, Pluto, uh, in your own fortune. And this is your fortune as a result for your efforts. For example, you might have had some things that you invested in the stock market that actually are paying off for you now at this crazy time with the stock market. Um, if you have also you know, done some hard work on a project at work or something like that, you might suddenly start seeing that it's rewarding you and that it's really paying off. So your investments might be you know, that you've made regarding um, work and, and um, your dreams and goals and ideas, they can start to pay off or you might see a bit of a change in circumstances and things go your way more under this energy. Surprising rewards. Now, the th 11th house is to do with political systems and uh, I'll believe it when I see it, but this is an energy for um, allowing political or seeing political systems be unexpectedly beneficial. So we might see, you know, a reduction of mandates in some parts of the world or removal of restrictions. Like currently I can't fly to America, you know, so it would be nice to see this energy. <laughs> but I know that um, I know that America actually uh, is a cancer sun country. So are you listening America? It would be lovely to be able to go for a trip, <laughs> go for a holiday. Um, Maybe that will happen under this influence. So there could be changes to some politically motivated stuff that's going on out there in the world. Um, also, some people might be getting involved with some sort of passionate activism on behalf of the masses under this energy. Now, the 11th house is also dreams and wishes. Um, and so this is a, a, a chance where your dreams and goals might be transformed somewhat, you know, changed in a way because Pluto is an energy of change, but it's going to be beneficial. It's not going to like be a rug pulled out from under you energy. It's going to be more of a now this feels in better alignment alignment. Yep, now that I've changed where I was focused, direction I was heading, I've reoriented myself, now I feel good about that. So expect to see some positive change for your dreams and goals. Leo, Leo rising, sun or moon people. Well, we are seeing the energy of Venus trying to Pluto on the 21st of June, which is solstice day, affecting your 10th house of public reputation and career. Um, so there could be some relationship changes. Why it's the 10th house? I'll tell you why. Because um, relationships uh, with the world are what might alter. Now, so not, I should have clarified, it's not personal relationships, but relationships with the world, the relationship with the masses, the relationship with bosses, the relationship with people out there, not in your home, private environment, which is a fourth house thing, but relationships with the world out in public might be transformed now. Maybe you've been struggling to get some recognition, to be seen, to be noticed in the world. Well, let me tell you, Pluto, trine Venus in its own sign, and I've got to point out it's near the North Node and, the, and Uranus as well. Um, they're still in, Venus is still in that energy. It could see a sudden transformation where it's, it takes you more to your destiny with your status in the world, your reputation in the world, how people see you, how the public and your relationship with the public um, is conducted. So it could be quite good for Leo rising people in that regard. 
there can be on this day, the 21st, more of an ease into a leadership position. And we know that Leo people are really good leaders. Um, so there's more ease into a leadership position because this is a very easy energy, a trine from Pluto, which is amplifying Venus in its own sign. Um, there can be some growth in your own social reputation now. So make the most of it, you know, enjoy that energy. People will perceive you on the 21st as being very charming, kind, gentle and sweet Venus things. That's how the world is going to see you. And um, there could be, like I said, uh, the possibility of sudden fame because of this for some people who've been working long and hard towards that end. So respectability, notoriety, all that sort of stuff can happen. There, If you have to deal with the government and you're a Leo person, this is a good day for it because you are empowered. You are empowered. Um, the, the dealings with the government and authority figures can go very well. Um, there could be some some big changes to your life that come from governments and authorities um, and what they instigate. So it might be a good time to submit some documents to council for approval if that's what you are, you know, uh, you know, thinking about doing. Maybe you need a planning permit or a building permit or, a, you know, a permit for your cafe or your coffee barista caravan or something. It's a good day to um, submit that under this energy. Um, there could be some very transforming interactions with a father figure, a boss or an authority figure now, things that change you, things that change them in the positive because Pluto is sending this positive trine your way. Um, and of course, if you Venus is spending money, money in general, you might be spending more money on this particular day on high end luxuries, you know, just be careful of taking it too far. But generally speaking, you'll feel good about buying something a bit you know a bit special a bit brand oriented a bit you know unique like the chanel sunglasses or whatever um so yeah there could also be some transformative changes with the wealth of the father um or the wealth of your boss with this particular influence also as well just to note leo okay now virgo rising sun or moon people you my dear friends are seeing the energy of venus making a trine aspect to pluto from your ninth house on the 21st of june which happens to be solstice day so if you're a man and you're virgo rising sun and moon and you've got this going on in your chart as we all will um you might have find that you have a sudden attraction to a foreign woman now or a, a woman who is highly spiritual or works in academia or works in education you could, because Pluto is empowering the, the purpose of Venus, which is love and money and luxuries, in the ninth house of foreign places, academia and education. You might meet somebody in one of those environments on, on this particular day. You might be spending more money on travel, on buying books for research or academia. Um, you might be investing more money into something that you, you do with other cultures, like for me most of my business is foreign to Australia so if this was me I might be finding that I'm spending money on um, you know sharing my work with people in other cultures through something it's also publishing you might be spending money on publishing right now on you know maybe on studying on learning on understanding ethics and faith and belief you know you might be doing a short course in that and if you are interested um, Virgo people in studying those sorts of higher knowledge things to do with faith and belief um, then I can recommend the Undying Stars Academy to you on Thinkific if you would like to explore those sorts of things so you might be spending money on those sorts of things um, there's there's also potential for a, a, an increase in and because Pluto is empowering the things of Venus in its own sign, the ninth house. So a greater love for an interest in international affairs right now. Um, you might book a holiday overseas. You might start watching YouTube videos all about traveling to the Amalfi Coast, where I would love to go one day. Um, you might start just getting, you know, amplifying your interest in these beautiful things. And it will mostly be for pleasure. So not travel, not interest in foreign affairs, um, as I, I gave an illustration before for business, well, yes, because it relates to money, but Venus is about pleasure and luxury as well. So you might be watching, I don't know, um, watching a movie. There's one movie I love, and I've got to think what it's called, where a lady goes to, um, to um, 
somewhere in Italy and buys a house and renovates it and discovers herself. There's probably a million films like that. Um, and I just love watching it because it takes me to another place, to another culture, and it's beautiful and it's romantic and it's dreamy. And you might be investing your thoughts and energy into those sorts of things, foreign films that take you to some gorgeous house in Umbria or something beautiful inspiring kind of stuff um, so this interest in things that are foreign that could be very prominent for you uh, under this influence um, there, there might be Venus is women and so it could be that some woman of inspiration brings some sort of higher level insight to you on the 21st of June some revelation some sort of truth that's revealed um, it could be some truth because this is the house of, of truth um, it's some truth that that is revealed to you regarding Venusian things money materiality relationships your sensual self um, some sort of truth might be revealed to you uh, on the 21st under this influence you could also get some sudden occult downloads with this transit as well prophecy is seen through this particular house so pay attention to um, any sort of goosebump moments that you have any ideas that you have any sort of you catch yourself daydreaming like and you're off with the fairies and no you come back to reality and you're like oh my goodness I was just thinking about xyz well you've just had a vision when that happens you know, that's, that's not something to be just sort of uh, pass that off as not important. It is important, probably more important than anything. They are our visionary moments. You have a Reiki session and, you know, you have a sort of a, a very prominent sort of dream-like experience in your Reiki session. It's prophecy. That's how it goes. So pay attention to those spiritual insights and occult downloads that come your way. There are going to be many signs and omens in your life on the 21st, um, my beautiful Virgo people. Don't ignore them. Pay attention to them. So you might also be discovering your truth under this influence regarding what you value, your morals, your ethics. There might even be some big changes because Pluto is going to want to transform those morals, values and ethics in a beautiful, harmonious way, in a way that feels good to you, in a way that feels right to you. Um, this is also the house of our vision for the future. And so we might find that our vision for the future for ourselves not so much for humanity it's more for ourselves. Um, might be refined or uh, made more beautiful somehow you know you might do a vision board on this day it would be a good day to do a vision board because you might sort of lift it up a notch with what you um, embrace that you can receive you know as we feel within so we can generate without as I said in the introduction to this video all right my lovely Librans we have lovely Leos lovely Librans and Libran rising sun and moon people well this is putting the energy of Venus in a trine to Pluto on this day the 21st um, occurring in your beautiful eighth house and I do love the eighth house um, so that's where this is this is going on now Pluto is one of the most powerful planets in the solar system um, just because he's small doesn't mean he doesn't pack a punch and this trine is really kick ass so yay and it's it's heading towards venus in its own sign in the eighth house and venus rules you libra venus is your planet so it's going to be felt very strongly by you well if you are at all involved in occult practices as a libran person you know maybe you're a channeler maybe uh you are an astrologer maybe you are a um a psychic well your messages are going to be so on point on this day your your tuning in is empowered your your understanding and your wisdom and knowledge is going to be bang on um, so you, you might even receive more inspiration with your work as an occultist under this energy and for those of you who are not you might be inspired to dive deep into shamanism alchemy astrology um, psychology you know um, energy healing um, apothecary work like I, I said earlier for Taurus rising people so um, very strong potential to draw you into those sorts of things on this particular day now if you're a man with this energy you might be attracted to or find yourself in the company of a lovely woman um, that is interested in those things that has a passion for those things or a significant woman in your life might develop interests in those fields encourage her support her this is the energy that's playing out now for all sexes this is a, a fabulous energy for sex tantric experiences 
um, having really transformative experiences with sexual partners, passionate, deep, intense experiences with your sexual partners. So if you're in a relationship and um, you get to enjoy that sort of thing, then that is wonderful, wonderful time for you. Make the most of it. In fact, why not plan a weekend away or you know, a, a night out at a restaurant or go to a motel room or something and make it fabulous <laughs> you know there's there's also for Libra and people a heightened magnetism and a and a sexual aura about them as a result of this energy because it's interacting with your lord of the first house it's you so um very exciting now there's always a shadow side to pluto just be conscious of any psychological games if you're in a difficult relationship where there's abuse and so on going on already then there could be some psychological games that um sort of cropping up and presenting themselves that's a shadow side to this energy but mostly you would see that if you were in a relationship where there's a lot of shit going down already okay um and if you are in that situation um do what you can to get out of it because we all deserve to be happy we all deserve to be loved in a healthy way um okay love triangles can occur in some instances with this so secret admirers hidden relationships that can bring uh, can bring on under this energy and also um the shadow side again i'm talking shadow side here with this energy uh, it's a positive aspect from pluto but you know with pluto you can't be too careful you do need to also mention the shadow sides and and shadow side of pluto connecting with venus in the eighth house could be that there might be a stalker in your life um and that's the shadow side but it could also be expressing as somebody who's just a bit obsessed with you you know or you're obsessed with somebody or and you're stalking them on their facebook page or something like that okay so that's just an energy that um this this can bring okay have to cover all bases um there's there could be some sudden insights that you receive that help raise your consciousness to pluto is like light bulb well actually uranus is the light bulb moments he rules electricity but pluto is is rev he's very truth revealing and it'll come as a you know um like it might be that that some truth is revealed to you and it's like oh my god you know it's so intense and overwhelming that this truth comes out um it's it's not a crisis but it's just, and, and not shocking because they relate to other things in the chart but um when pluto reveals something it's soul changing shall we say um now venus here can indicate in the eighth house that there might be sudden changes to finance sudden changes to love sudden change in a good way eighth house is not always you know bad crisis i mean i get really sick i have to say libra i get so sick of hearing people say oh eighth house is crisis i hate the eighth house it's a malefic house and blah 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 sometimes crisis can be good eighth house is the house of winning tats lotto it's the house of windfalls you know since when was that sudden shock crisis a bad thing no it's not and out of crisis times can often come blessing for us because we something is revealed um something is is changed and and we get out of a rut so i i actually don't have a problem with the eighth house so um i just needed to get on my bandwagon about that one um so sudden changes that could come your way in the positive for finances with love luxuries of life and and even your own um personal way of doing life could suddenly take a big turnaround as well because venus rules you like i said this is a house of tats lotto wins <laughs> so there's a big possibility of windfalls now i'm not saying you're going to win first division you might win 20 bucks bonus that's 20 bucks you didn't have before so um yeah this this is possible um you could also receive sudden opportunities for moral or emotional support as well and that's also a windfall of an eighth house nature too when somebody comes your way and they're like i'm going to back you i'm going to support you i believe in you you know um that sort of thing that's we need that and that's an eighth house thing as well um for some there might also be a deep form of liberation from material attachments that could come during this time and if that happens then it's going to help deepen your consciousness now i'm not saying that this is this is a transit for poverty or losing everything that you have it is not far from it it's the opposite but your inner self might be transformed with regards to money pluto transforms venus is what you value in the house of change your value system might be changed and it will deepen your level of consciousness if that occurs um 
Other people who perhaps aren't so high level in consciousness might be stashing money or hiding it away, secret businesses, secret alliances, um, secret money, you know, that offshore banking account in the Cayman Islands and stuff like that. Uh, just, just because I have to cover all bases with Pluto, um, be very careful of sort of attacks from women, you know, spiritual attacks that you might not be aware of. It wouldn't hurt for all Libran people to sort of visualize a, a spiritual protection mechanism in place, you know, perhaps vision envision on this day, the 21st of June, some sort of like, I like to see like a spiritual ball, like out of um, the Incredibles, um, Violet incredible she puts this force field around herself you know you might like to do that um, just to protect you um, in some way okay Scorpio rising sun or moon people well the energy of the lovely trine from Pluto your modern ruler to Venus is falling in your seventh house so this is happening on the 21st of june the day of the solstice more socializing with partners enjoying the pleasures and luxuries of life together under this influence yay why not book into that restaurant um you know make plans to go to that art gallery together have fun um so that's what we're seeing for for married partners more delight more sexual experiences venus is a very sexual energy a sensual energy pleasure in the bedroom pleasure and delight with the the five senses of life going out to like i said you know there used to be a fabulous restaurant in sydney called death by chocolate and that was very Ven venusian you if you could eat their death by chocolate dessert which was uh, i have no words um you got a certificate so I miss that place. <laughs> it's not there anymore. Um, anyway, going out and doing decadent things, Venus with your partner is going to help you feel wonderful on this day because Pluto is amplifying all Venusian things that you do when you share an experience with someone else, when you share Venusian things with others. Now that's sex, that's food, that's shopping, that's pleasurable you know concerts and things like that enjoy it now for single people who've got this unfolding um, you might have a sense on this day that Venusian things might feel far away from you because it's over here in the house of other people okay beauty love money and if that makes you you sad I just want to remind you it's it's an energy that will pass you know it, it, you know it pass soon enough it's not going to last very long now this is generally a positive energy it really is but it's Pluto is directing its amplification of Venus things to other people so if you're married it's directing it to your partner to experience all the beautiful Venusian stuff and if you're lucky you can join in and experience it with them now um, if you're not married then it's gonna feel like well everybody else has love and I don't and boohoo and you know everybody else has money and I just struggle to you know to have enough every week and you know everybody else has a you know beautiful clothes and my clothes are all falling apart and you know you you are and I hope that's not the case for anybody but you're looking at others and feeling like on this day everybody else has got people in the seventh house has got and I don't okay so this is just a passing energy that you might feel it's not gonna last just if you feel that way pull yourself up Scorpio and say oh that Venus Pluto trine you know it should be feeling good Venus Pluto trine but it's in my seventh house and I'm feeling jealous and I'm feeling envious okay don't beat yourself up about it it's just the energy of the moment but the good thing is that the seventh house is what we can attract from others it's like a mirror it's like here's you Scorpio looking in the mirror there's the mirror reflecting back to you so therefore it can mean that you might start you know with positive um, approach to life and positive manifestation energy you might start attracting venusian things from other people particularly from the women in your life because venus represents women so you know you you could find single um scorpio people that a woman in your life gifts you with something you know you might get blessed by a woman in your life because it's reflecting back to you some blessing you know she might buy you that Gucci handbag that you've always wanted or you know something decadent and incredible like that not that I'm a big fan of Gucci handbags but you know that sort of thing um, now it could also be for some Scorpio people that are single that you might meet a partner 
on this day. So that would be positive. Now you'd need a few other things unfolding in your chart at the same time as well. But that's one of the things by transit that could be really beneficial for encountering a partner. And if you do, there will be, you know, some of the someone that you feel really good about that there's a positive interaction with, they will make you feel more beautiful and appealing and attractive, you will make them feel more beautiful, appealing and attractive. And it's just amplification of Venus stuff. It's a good combo, this energy, um, for bringing in a beautiful relationship. Now, if you are somebody, I'm trying to describe every relationship dynamic that I can think of, but if you're not in a happy relationship, like let's say you're in a relationship and it sucks and you hate it and you wish you were out, well, this energy could spell a sudden change. It's not because Pluto has anything to do with getting divorced or anything like that, but Pluto is to transform. And he particularly likes to transform things that are not serving us well that are not for our highest good and they're not for our soul's evolution. So this is an energy where it could even spell, a, a, you know, the end of a relationship. But if it does, it's because that relationship sucked and it was time you got out and it wasn't for you. Okay. Um, so because of this, sometimes we might see a partner being, you know, a bit irrational or a bit erratic, you know, but it's not going to be a bad thing. Like it's a trine from Pluto, not a square. Um, so there could be big changes in the life of your partner. And uh, sort of if, the, if the, there's a breakup that comes, it will happen fast. It will happen quickly. Um, and now this can even be applied to business relationships as well. And I'm talking about when, you know, you, you had a business contract with somebody and all of a sudden it, it falls apart and it's all over Red Rover and maybe that's a good thing it needed to happen. So business partnerships are also seen through this seventh house too. Uh, just one thing to watch out for, Pluto empowers Venus and Venus can be very indulgent. So watch out that your partners aren't spending all the money you know you go out for for dinner and lo and behold there's nothing in the bank account to pay for dinner but you end up doing the dishes in the kitchen because your partner's gone and bought i don't know 50 car parts that he needed to import from america or something Ugh. so yeah <laughs> watch out for little not very nice surprises like that too that could actually manifest under this energy Okay, so that is our Scorpio friends. Now, Sagittarius, you've been hanging in there. We're almost at the end of our sojourn around the horoscope. Thank you, Sagittarius rising sun and moon people. The energy of Venus in a trine to Pluto on the 21st, which is solstice, is falling in your sixth house. And you guys, you poor Sagittarian people, have had a really heavy road um, with the sixth house over the last couple of weeks, couple of months. So this transit, Pluto is going to empower Venus, the Lord of your sixth house. So I will just point out that if you are in a conflict situation or a situation where there's some fights and difficulties, um, animosity, dealing with enemies, that sort of thing, that you are empowered on this day. Um, are you empowered? I take that back. It could be that your enemy is somehow empowered because this is a house of open enemies. Venus rules those people. Okay, so just be careful. <laughs> I had to pull myself up and double think there. Um, Pluto will be empowering those people in your life. So I'm, I, I really, the sixth house is my least favorite house, but it is one of the most important houses. And we'll get to why in just a minute. But in the lower vibration where there's enemies and broken promises, broken contracts, difficult relationships, it sucks. So those people like, um, enemies might be being empowered in your life on this date just know it's a passing energy it's not going to be permanent lay low it will pass in about a day or two when venus moves into gemini okay um now for some people because venus is love and relationships if anyone begins a relationship under this transit it could be highly imbalanced could be a relationship where there's different financial levels between the partner, um, differences in love given and love received. Um, people who are Sagittarius, rising sun and moon might be experiencing relationships that are very much out of balance right now, where one person is giving more than the other person. And um, that can be financially, morally, emotionally, spiritually, whatever. Um, so very imbalanced and cer certainly a sense of self-worth, Venus, can be out of whack with this as well. So so really 
do be careful, my beautiful Sagittarian people. If you are looking to start a relationship, um, ordinarily a trine from Pluto is a lovely thing to Venus, but not when it's affecting your sixth house. Just give it a bit of time until Venus moves into Gemini and then go for it. It's only a couple of days. Listen to the intro. I spell out what dates um, Venus is doing things this week. Um, so be careful. You might compromise your nervous system with these stressful relationships. Um, that can be a thing. Lots of up and downs, ups and downs, get my words out, with relationships. Um, yeah, the women in your life, especially if you work with women, you know, like you've got women colleagues at work, workmates, or women employees, they, they could be a little bit difficult under this energy. They're sort of a bit... Um, not feisty, but they're, they're pushing for change, perhaps that you might not want in your workplace or your work environment or something like that. Um, this, is, this is our work colleagues and Pluto is going to be empowering our work colleagues. So maybe this energy is not going to have anything to do with you at all, Sagittarius, which is possible. And maybe it's going to be that the um the the women in your workplace you know they are just they're having a great time you know they're bringing champagne for somebody's 50th birthday um one morning at work and they're celebrating because venus is indulgences and luxuries and you know nice things like champagne and chocolate cake and stuff like that and then um pluto is empowering that amongst your workmates pleasures indulgences delights so it could look like that instead, which would be a far better option than having to deal with enemies who are more empowered than you are under this influence on the 21st of June. Far better option would be that your work colleagues who are women are celebrating, having a good time and having pleasure. That would be great. Um, also, the other thing that the Sixth House represents is your health and well-being. And the good news here is this is where things take a big upturn. Um, this is the, the higher vibration of the sixth house. And one of the reasons why it is so important is that Venus rules your sixth house. She's in your sixth house and it's your health and well-being. And Pluto makes this beautiful trine. If you've been suffering with health problems, you might find that you find a solution to your health problem on this day and that, that feeling good comes easier and finding beneficial health practitioners is easier to do. You know, you've been looking for a good acupuncturist, lo and behold, there they are on the 21st of June, right in your neighborhood. Um, that sort of thing, you know, you know, those sorts of um, opportunities to improve your health, and get over some sort of illness or deal with some sort of problem physically and health-wise in your life is greatly enhanced and greatly empowered by this transit, I have to say. So let's hope that that's how it plays out for everyone, bringing you positive health experiences. The final thing that the sixth house represents um, for our Sagittarius rising people is that it's the place where we burn our karma and you are empowered to burn your karma on this day. So if this was me and I was having this transit, I would be looking for ways to help heal and serve women in my community. Because if you do that, Venus is women, if you're doing that, then Pluto, which is a tremendously karmic planet, is going to um, do his usual restoration thing, Pluto rules restoration, and restore your karma. So if there are some people who are suffering that you know of in the world, um, you know, whether that's you know, they don't have as much education or as much food or as much warm clothing on a winter, you know, winter's night or enough shelter. Get in there and help, especially on the 21st, because my God, you will transform. It's not only about being kind to other people, even though that is the most important thing, but it's about transforming your karma, burning off that old karma and being set free by the transformation of your karma. And it could change everything for you, it could change everything. So there's some positive things with the sixth house. You've got to cover both when you're talking about the sixth house. It's a bit of a hairy one. Capricorn, rising sun or moon, people. Oh my goodness, you have waited until last and I thank you for that. And now we are looking at the energy of Venus trining Pluto from your fifth house. And this is quite special. It's happening on the 21st of June, which is solstice day. So big, powerful solstice day. There is good karma in the fifth house. 
And the energy could be filled with a lot of transformational surprises for you, Capricorn people. This is the house of supreme intelligence and genius with creative things like art, design. And with Venus here, it's talent with, you know, art, design, beauty. Um, also, Venus, um, Venus rules anything to do with uh, like fashion and things that are like a talent with perfumes, creating perfumes or creating beautiful food, like art and intelligence and creativity that flows into the central things of life, which I've just described a few of them. So you are going to be able to A, enjoy more of those things and have more fun and pleasure because the house of fun and entertainment, fun and pleasure with art, design, beauty, food, clothes, all that Venusian stuff. You're going to enjoy more of it and you might be able to um, express more of that. You might get the chance to dress up and, you know, go out and have fun and party on. But, you know, you're expressing your creativity through the clothes you wear or the makeup that you put on or the perfume that you choose. Um, you could express your creativity through some sort of art that you're doing or some design work or creating a could be, you know, putting together a website or something, which is not necessarily a fifth house thing, but there's a lot of creativity that goes into designing a website. It's so fun. So those sorts of things are likely to be very prominent and strong for you on this day. And our, our ability to feel love in the house, a fifth house, is greatly enhanced as well when Venus is here being amplified by a beneficial trine from Pluto. Um, so your ability to feel love is enhanced. We feel a deep love for the whole world, for other women, for life in general, a lot of love for our children. We might attract a new lover who transforms our life. Pluto is to transform our love life. It's coming from the house of you, Pluto, from the first house you to the fifth house of your lovers, boyfriends, girlfriends, Venus, planet of love here. Yeah, it's all happening. You guys could definitely meet. If there's other things that support this in your chart. Definitely meet partner like a lover a, a, a romantic experience might be on the cards for you so love that and you can attract a lot more pleasures into your life now under this influence as well more glamour more glitterati more romance more dating more fun um, you know some of you Capricorn people it mightn't be your usual style but if you wanted to try on what it feels like to be a bit of a playboy or a playgirl then this is the energy for it um, if you are somebody, Capricorn, who has followers or fans, though, well, you might receive a lot of love from your followers and fans, a lot of generosity, material favors, material gifts, material blessings, Venus, from your fans, your followers, which could be really, really lovely. Um, there could be, like, this is a house of financial risks, and I would say that financial risks could bring you sudden fortune under this influence, you know. Um, Venus is a planet of money. Pluto is the great god of wealth, um, the ancient god of great wealth. Not only that, but the fifth house is a house of speculations and striking it lucky. Pluto is coming from the house of you to the fifth house, so, you know, you could be lucky with some sort of speculative endeavor. I, I Look, I'm not someone who's big on gambling myself, but when I see something like this happening, I'd be like, yeah, why not? One day out of the year when I could, you know, play this energy and see how it goes, why not? If it doesn't work out, big, you know, no big deal. It's just one, one Tats Lotto ticket or one pull of the pokey handle that I've lost. Um, but, you know, every now and again, when the energy is right, why not? just for fun and this is a house of fun and it should be fun the moment that sort of thing is not fun you don't do it because fifth house is fun fifth house is playful and fifth house has to do with gambling and taking risks and speculative endeavors so if it's not fun it's not fifth house it becomes an addiction then and that's not a fifth house thing and you never get anything from that that becomes a 12th house thing the house of losses so it's one of the reasons why the 12th house has to do you know with loss and addiction are both seen from there addictions bring you loss occasionally playing and having a bit of fun is more of the beneficial fifth house thing so you've got to be in that right energy space for these things to bring you what you want them to bring you okay um, now if you work in fields that are very venusian like the fashion industry the beauty industry maybe you're a hairdresser or a beautician or a just fashion designer or something like that um, then your creativity is going to be 
right up there, like very empowered, very transformative. You might even come up with a whole new idea that like, you know, you were designing a clothing range that was going in that direction. And after June the 21st, you're like, no, let's go in that direction with the the fashion show that we're putting together and change it completely. Pluto transforms and it's going to be creatively beneficial. So pay attention to your inspirations under this energy. You uh, may have a very happy time socializing with female friends, um, hanging out with with people who really change your perspective, change your point of view in, an, in a fun environment. Like you go out to a concert with a girlfriend and there's a group of her friends there and you, you know, you change your whole approach to life or love or beauty or something just by hanging out with these new, very interesting people in an entertaining way. Um, you could really break the mold with regard to design or art or fashion, as I said. Um, and is that, this is one of the houses of fame. And if you are hungry for fame, well, Pluto could empower you on this day um, with your fifth house lord in the fifth. I might also point out it's conjunct with Uranus and conjunct with the north node. So there's a hell of a lot of energy going on with that Venus right now. Um, if you, you know, it's a time to put your best stride forward to achieve fame and um, recognition as well. Um, you might be invited to some really fun um, sort of social events under this energy you will be very magnetizing to other people now people will want to be with you people want to hang with you um, they will enjoy your warmth and your love right now um, some people might progress to a whole transformative new level in their love relationships with this trine which is very exciting if you're wanting to take it up a notch this could be very very good um, and it could even because Pluto is the god of great wealth it could bring you sudden windfalls uh, not only financially but in terms of creative opportunities that come your way um, as well so enjoy what life has to offer my beautiful Capricorn friends well thank you one and all for sticking with me for this astrology report I will have another one for you next Saturday so stay tuned for that I'll catch you then